SonarCube is without a doubt the industry's most popular and most familiar static code analysis tool. And if you're a software developer, it behooves you. I love that term behooves. It's so condescending. But really, it does. It behooves you to learn how SonarCube works and subsequently integrate SonarCube runs at the end of every single build you do. And if you're a DevOps professional, well, you should be integrating SonarCube runs at the end of every continuous integration build that you do so that you can identify code vulnerabilities, performance vulnerabilities, and just outright software code smells. Now, the good thing is SonarCube is incredibly easy to use. I'm going to show you how to install SonarCube. I'm going to show you how to run a SonarCube build. I'm going to show you how to integrate SonarCube with Jenkins. I'm going to show you all the ins and outs of how SonarCube works. And this is only going to take 10 or 15 minutes to do, even less if you watch this video on 1.5 or 2x speed, which I highly, highly recommend you do. But going over the basic prerequisites for SonarCube and downloading the tool and getting it quickly installed. That is exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, getting started with SonarCube. The very first thing you need to do in order to use SonarCube is you've got to install Java and you've got to install Maven. We don't have to install Maven, but I'm going to be using Maven in this tutorial and really it behooves you to install Java and Maven. The other thing that I've got and you'll notice is that I've got Java Home set. It's probably not necessary. I think I got Maven Home set as well. But what is important is having Maven and the JDK's bin directory on the path. That's going to make your life a whole heck of a lot easier as we start going in and working with SonarCube. The next thing you do, once you've got that installed, once you've got the JDK and Maven configured, maybe even Gradle, you want to download SonarCube. So just head over to the SonarCube site. You'll notice there's a variety of different additions. There's the Community Build Developer Enterprise Data Center. We just want the open source and free Community Build. So just click on the link to download the Community Build. Now they will ask you for your email address, but if you want to be tricky, and deprive them of your email address. You can just click the download only link. I love it when a company does that, but you know what? Maybe we should reward them for doing that by giving them our email address. I don't know. They're not too bad. They're not going to spam you too powerfully. Okay, so the download happens. It gets downloaded as a zip file, and I think we all know what to do with zip files. We select the zip file extract archive. That's going to download a, an archive with the version number on it. I'm just going to tidy that up. Just call it SonarCube. And then I put everything into a tools folder on my machine. Put it somewhere that makes sense to you in your environment. And there you go. You have now made sure that you've got the prerequisites ready and you have download and essentially installed SonarCube. Once you've got that into a folder that you like, dig into that bin directory. You should see a folder that maps to your operating system. I've got Windows x86-64 right here. I'm going to open that up. You'll see that there's a couple of bats in there. Don't eat them. You might get COVID. But uh, there's the start sonar.bat file. We want to run that from PowerShell. So I'm going to open up PowerShell. I'm going to CD into that directory. And once I've CD'd into that directory, I'll just do a little ls command to make sure that I'm in the right folder. And once I know that I am, I'm just going to do dot slash start sonar dot bat. And boom, in just a, a couple of minutes, things are going to start up. Once it tells me that, hey, it looks like things are installed, I'm going to mosey on over to localhost 9000. And when I do, well, it's going to tell me that SonarCube is starting. Again, give it a minute, let SonarCube start up, and eventually you'll be asked to log in. Admin is the login name. Admin is the password. Click log in. That password won't last for very long. They're going to ask you to change your password to something a little bit more complicated, which I'm going to do here. And once you're done, you're on the SonarCube dashboard, and we are now ready to start using SonarCube. 
Now you've got the Sonar Cube dashboard here. Feel free to poke around, click on the links at the top. You're not going to do any damage and you might learn something. One of the things that I want to do is I want to actually build and do a static code analysis of an actual project of mine. You can see that I've got a folder here under underscore repos called rock, paper, scissors. This is some Java code from my GitHub repository. You can do a Git clone and bring this down onto your local file system if you want. But I want to do a static code analysis of this. Now, it's my code. I wrote it. So this might be boring because I doubt there's any bugs or errors or it, really this should just be a template of what great coding is. But I don't know. Why don't we just test out Sonar Cube with this? Let's actually run all of this Java code through Sonar Cube and sees, see what happens. So the first thing we want to do is on the dashboard where we can create a project, we want to choose the create a local project option. That's the, the best way to start. Give it a name. I'm going to call mine Rashamba. I think that's the, the name that they use in in uh, in the east to describe rock, paper, scissors. South Park did use that in one of their television episodes and South Park did what South Park does with the term. So don't Google it. But anyways, I'm gonna call this Rashambo. That's the easy stage. The second stage asks me how I wanna choose a baseline for this code. Basically, I wanna say that every time there's a new commit, we can assume that that's new code coming in. So the commit will be what indicates to uh, Sonar Cube what is uh, new code, where new issues might be happening. Just click Create Project. It's going to present you with a, a great big hexadecimal number after you click that Generate button. That's going to be used to uniquely identify this project when you do build. Um, just commit that to memory. It's, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to do. Option you could just copy it. But you know what? I'm going to be working with Maven. So I've actually even got a, a better option. I'm just going to click continue. And I'm going to say to the tool, give me the Maven build command to not just build my code, but to also run a sonar cube inspection of my code as well. So I click on Maven here. I scroll down a little bit and you can see there's a Maven clean verify sonar command. You can integrate that with Maven install or Maven compile if you want. But you'll notice that that points to my local installation of, of Sonar Cube and it uses the token. I can just use this and run this at the command line and we'll actually get a Sonar Cube run in. So I'm going to go into the folder of this project that is the Maven Palm. You can see it right there. I'm going to open up a Bash shell. And I do know that Bash stands for born again shell. So when I say Bash shell, I'm really saying ba born again shell shell, but it just rolls off the tongue. Better open up a Bash shell, paste in that Maven command and allow that Maven command to run for just a second or two. And then head back into Sonar Cube and see what it says there. It says my code has passed. It has zero security issues. It has zero reliability issues. It has zero maintainability issues. Essentially, it's saying that my code is some of, well, okay, maybe there's some issues in there. I, to be honest, I put those issues in there just just to make this tutorial more interesting. Um, but I want to take a look at what it says. It's got reliability issues. It's got code coverage issues. There's not enough tests. There never is. No duplication of the code. A little bit of a maintainability issue. But let's go in and dig deeper on these, these issues. You'll notice that when you have a, an issue, so it says, hey, you should be using big decimal dot value of instead in this code here. You can take a look at the problem and you can assign it to one of the people on your team. Now, I'm just, uh, I've only got one person set up right now, but I'm going to assign this to me, the administrator, and then all of a sudden that gets well, assigned to me. Let's go to the other one, either override object dot equals or rename the method to prevent confusion. Um, I can go down and take a look at that and notice there's a, a bunch of options when you click on this drop down box. Um, I can accept this as a, an actual bug. I can say, hey, this is a false positive. Um, I can confirm it. I can fix it. Those are deprecated uh, options. So we're supposed to use accept or false positive. But I don't know. Why don't I just say this is a false positive? It's come up as a bug, but really it's not. So I'll just put a little comment in there. Hey, this is just a false positive. And when I 
commit that, you can see that now this bug is updated as a false positive. So a cool little tool that allows you to, to go in and take a look at the errors that you have. Um, I'm going to take a look at some of the other issues that exist here. Um, you can go into the tool, you can click on an error, and it'll actually show you the code and where the error exists. Now, I'm looking at a security issue right here, and it says, hey, you know, it looks like you've got a password in your code, and gosh darn it, it does, doesn't it? So the static code analysis tool, static code analysis tool has detected that there's a variable named password, and it'll notice derivations of that. It's saying, look, you may have a password in your code. Do not push this to GitHub. Do not push this to Bitbucket. This is a problem. But this is super cool. It's actually showing me exactly where in the code the error is. We as developers no longer have excuses not to deal with these issues when you've got a tool like SonarCube pointing you directly to it. And I can take a look at some of the other issues here. So insecure configuration, by the way, I really dislike the term insecure. Insecure, it doesn't have a self-confidence problem. Okay, insecure means, you know, you're not confident in yourself, you, you, you're worried about what other people think. It, insecure does not mean not secure. So I think what they mean is not secure. I don't think it is a confidence issue. But yeah, we can go in and take a look at some of the, the issues that we have right here. Notice it says, hey, make sure that these publicly writable directories are used safely here. So a little bit of a, a catch as well. So, you know, it shows you the errors and it points you right at the code so you can go in and edit them as well. And there's a bunch of other tabs here. There's take a look at measures. You can take a look at, at code. This gives a, an overview of the issues in your code. So you can see it saying, you know, there's 257 lines of code. There's 38 maintainability issues. In the SRC folder itself, there's 180, right? Because there's this is also including like uh, code in your palm file when it's just the project. Um, and then it takes a look at the palm file, 77 files in there. looks like there's no problems with the palm file. So that is a good thing. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about that. Um, go on, take a look at security hotspots. It'll show you actually where the build was run. As I said, you're getting all sorts of really interesting information about your project through this sonar cube tool now most people that use sonar cube want to start integrating it with jenkins and have jenkins do the build and do your sonar cube reports that is actually exactly what i'm going to show you how to do next so next we'll have a light tutorial on how to integrate jenkins with sonar cube now this is the the basic integration you can actually have more advanced integrations and you can head over to the jenkins youtube channel maybe the sonar cube youtube channel and look at some of the really in-depth integrations but to do an integration at a high level this is how you do it i've got jenkins installed i'm actually just running jenkins from a docker container right now i've got a tutorial on how to run jenkins and install it in a docker container you should definitely check it out that makes life a lot easier but i do have jenkins it's running on localhost 80 80, but because I'm running a container, that won't be good enough later when I work with SonarQ. We're going to have the IP address of the host, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. When I click on Manage Jenkins, I'm just going to go into Tools very, very quickly. You'll just want to make sure, well, you probably want to make sure that, well, you need Git installed. Uh, if Git's on the path, you're good. I always like to make sure that I've got a Maven installation registered. You can see that I've got Maven 3.9.9 registered. Boy, they're getting close to four. And I think I've got that registered with the name M3 and Maven Home as, as well, or Maven Default. So make sure you got your tools configured. That's one thing that uh, uh, you will need, at least have Maven there. And then when you're done that, go into the configuration tool and configure a plugin. Now, when you get to the plugins page, uh, it always takes you to update, so if you search for Sonar, it's, you're not going to find it. Make sure you click on Available Plugins, and then just search for that good old Sonar Cube Scanner plugin. When you find it, click the button, choose it, say yes, I do want to install, and then let that installation run. Just take a second. Okay, now that's going to make it possible for us to include a reference to sonar cube in our builds 
What I want to do next is actually do a Jenkins build. In order to do that, I need a, a GitHub repo. So I'm heading over to the rock, paper, scissors, GitHub repo. I'm not doing this locally. And I'm going to just copy the HTTP URL for that repository. I'll need that in order to create a Jenkins build job. By the way, if you want code coverage too, you actually have to add this Jococo entry into your Maven palm file. That's one other thing that you, you might want to do. So just take a look at that and add that to your palm file to get the most out of the integration. It won't fail if you don't have it there, but it'll give you extra code coverage information if you do. Okay, so now I'm just gonna head back into Jenkins. I'm gonna create a new item. I'm gonna call it rock, paper, scissors. It's just gonna be a basic Jenkins freestyle project. I'm going to come in here. I'll ignore most of that top level stuff, but I want to go and select a, a Git repo to pull from. So I'll just paste in that HTTP URL that I provided earlier. Uh, be careful on the branch. Sometimes it's the master branch. Sometimes it's the main. I think Jenkins still defaults to master on a lot of installations. So uh, I've got a main branch. So Make sure it's updated to main there, not master. And then on add build steps, well, I'm just going to come down here and say I want to invoke a top level Maven target. I'll click on that. It's going to say what version of Maven do you want to use? I think both Maven latest and M3. That's what I configured in tools. They point to 3.9.9. .9, so either of them is fine. And I'm just going to paste in that Maven command we used earlier. You can have multiple maven commands here but i just want to run this as the last command so i throw that in there once i'm done i click apply i click save i click save i click apply i can never remember which one i'm supposed to click on um, and then when the job comes up i'll just click build now that job is gonna run look at he split didn't take too long it looks like the job was successful I can come over here, take a look at the console output, and I can see that indeed the code ran. But you know where I'm from? I'm from Missouri. I need to be shown. So I'm going to head over into that Sonar Cube tool. And when I come in here, well, look at that. I've got a little bit of new information here. And specifically, if you don't believe this has changed, look at where it says new issues. It says there's one new issue issue, right? Because there's one new issue since the last build happened. However, a lot of things were fixed too. And there's a couple of different places you can go on the, the page, but I like this graph at the bottom of this overview page because you can see a history of your builds and you can see that, okay, the first build had a lot of problems. The second build had even more problems, but look what's happening now. Over time, that's going down. And you know what? That's what I wish for you on your projects, that over time, the problems that SonarCube reports eventually go down instead of going up. And